Welcome back. From those conversations, we move on now to a report that showcases some other major events which shaped the judiciary in year 2019. Here's a review. The year opened with the unprecedented and controversial exit of the immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoye. On the 23rd of January 2019, the Code of Conduct Tribunal ordered the suspension of Justice Onoge from office pending the determination of the charges of false assets declaration made against him. Two days later, on the 25th, President Muhammadu Buhari swiftly obeyed the order and immediately swore in the next most senior justice of the Supreme Court as the acting Chief Justice of Nigeria. I have concerns about the timing. I see undertones. I personally believe that it was politically motivated. Um, maybe the petitioners have a view and see this as the time to take that petition forward. But I think we should also, as lawyers, I think we should look at it outside of the purview of the timing. The timing is unfortunate. But my, my own personal view is, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. We see other countries where we see people who go for political office. And they have made up their minds that they want to go into political office. Or they want to go into judicial office. Or they want to go into legislative office. And they maintain records. To me, judges, and anybody who holds public office must be like Caesar's wife. They must be above board. They must ensure that they, must, that they are available to scrutiny at all times. If there's nothing to hide, the timing would be relevant because there's nothing to find and therefore there's nothing to be afraid of. I do think though that the, the timing has beclouded the issue. Though Justice Onoge was eventually convicted by the tribunal in April, he was, however, allowed to voluntarily retire from the bench by the National Judicial Council, NJC. It must be difficult for them to decide to impose a harsh penalty on one of their own, and it must be difficult to recognize when you're in high and privileged office that the law applies to you as it does to any other person on the street. For the country, I think it's a triumph. It's a vindication of law. It's an example to those who administer law and justice in the country. And it tells the people of Nigeria that when error is committed in high places, even the powerful and the mighty will not escape. Another major judicial event in 2019 was the outcome of the presidential election petition filed by the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, against the winner of the February 23 election, President Muhammadu Buhari. On September 11, the presidential election petition tribunal, in a unanimous judgment, dismissed the petition. The five-man panel, led by Justice Mohamed Gaba, described the issues contained in the petitions as mere allegations and lacking in probative value. This decision was later affirmed by the Supreme Court in October 2019, with a new Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohamed, presiding. A total of 766 petitions were filed to challenge various results of the 2019 general elections, and the courts were kept busy. Apart from election-related matters, the courts also dealt with other matters concerning politically exposed persons. Former governor of Abia State, Oju Zokalu, was convicted and sentenced to 12 years imprisonment for a 7 billion naira fraud. He has since challenged the judgment. Another of his colleagues, the former governor of Oyo State, Rashidi Ladoja, was found not culpable on allegations concerning a 4.7 billion naira fraud. Also worthy of note was the news of the award of $9.6 billion to a company, Process and Industrial Development, against the federal government by a United Kingdom court. The government has since challenged the judgment. There were two parties. The P and ID, which is the company 
and Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources. As you rightly know very well, Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources is not a producer of gas. Gas products are produced by IOCs, International Oil Companies, NPDC, and perhaps NNPC. So when you conceived, sign, and execute a contract for the supply of gas products without involving IOCs, NPDC, and NNPC as a party to that agreement, you know very well that there are a lot of questions to answer arising from the execution of that agreement. Another judgment which many hailed as a landmark one is the one ordering the federal government to recover all pensions collected by former governors now serving as ministers and lawmakers at the National Assembly. The court subsequently adjourned till February 2020 for hearing on reports of compliance with the order. And that's one of many cases to look out for in this new year. Talking about compliance with court orders, many critics fault the federal government on issues of human rights violation and outright disobedience of court orders, especially in cases involving the former National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki, Shite leader Ibrahim El Zagzaki and his wife, and that of the convener of the Revolution Now protest, Omoyele Showare. The position which the president has been taking, that security considerations should override the demands of personal liberty is unacceptable in view of the provisions of the Constitution, Section 35, which allows for personal liberty. You cannot deprive anyone of their personal liberty unless you do it in accordance with the due process of law. And it's even more objectionable where you have the courts asking that you release an individual and the president says no, he's not going to do so because of considerations of uh, uh, security. You find that Nigeria is not the only country that has these uh, concerns. All over the world you have security concerns. But the courts are allowed to do their work to determine whether the person who is being detained should be allowed on bail or should remain in uh, custody. It is not for the executive to take the matter out of the hands of a court. They may have committed very grievous crimes against public interest, but the Constitution provides a framework for the determination of such issues. And the Constitution does not give the president, or indeed anyone in Nigeria, the right to continue to detain persons contrary to court orders. And I think it's a very dangerous thing to do to engage in selective acceptance and enforcement of court decision. Of course, national interest has to be reflected, but national interest is reflected in various provisions of fundamental human rights. So when you look at chapter four of the constitution, it gives you a right to life, it qualifies that right by saying in certain circumstances, your right to life could be abridged. In relation to the right to personal liberty, it also gives you circumstances in which your right to personal liberty could be violated. Just before the year wrapped up, the government eventually obeyed the court orders and released Dasuki and Shuwore. In this new year, it will be interesting to see how the government manages its relationship with the judiciary. The expectation is that all arms of government will work together to always uphold the rule of law. The legislature must rise to the occasion um, and hold government to account. Governments depend, you know, the arms of government depend on each other in order to function. And so we can't afford to leave the judiciary at the mercy of the executive, which is what is happening. So the other arms of government need to. Um, and I think part of the things that uh, we need to do as a nation is just have strong institutions. So if you have a very strong institution, just say, well, sorry, um, Mr. Minister, this is what the court says. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. I think until we get to that stage, we'll probably continue to have uh, the Malami Buhari problem we have today. And that's our program this week. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to catch the repeats on air or watch via our YouTube channel. I'm Shola Shoyeli. See you next week. <music>